The October Fiscal Cliff. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Still working through this morning Stein of coffee. Great way to start the day. You know, maybe I should be sponsored by Stein companies. <laughs> let, let me know if you can find someone that manufactures them in Australia because everything I'm looking at, well, it's all important. This one's actually from West Germany, from Bavaria. It's about, well, about 30 years old, I think, from the last time, maybe even older than that, from when my father went over there. So, you know, it goes down from one generation to the next. Let's have a look at this. This is discussing our fiscal cliff now in October and more econ economist warnings after the deficit um, budget update, shall we say. So economists say Australia's economy economic decline still looms this year after changes to pandemic support measures and pinpoint one critical month. One critical month. So they say in October. I'd say they'll be, well, they've pushed everything out now. The big thing was September and it would all fall apart. They've pushed out JobKeeper to some extent until March. They've pushed out the mortgage holidays until March. Uh, job seeker bonus is going to the end of the year. I always thought, okay, it'll hit September and then we won't see the effects of it and really materialize until quarter one next year, until after Christmas, until people go to Christmas. They have a few little drinky drinks. They crack open their rum and Cokes or actually if they're civilized, dark and stormies, and, uh, you know, swipe the credit card. Oh, yeah, honey, you'll get, yeah, no problem. You'll get that. Oh, we go boom, boom, boom. And then, oh, we'll just after pay it. It'll be good. So then the, you know, bills arrive. They're looking at, oh, what's going on? Then we start to see the hit. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see because now they're continuing all these things, slowly decantering off us off the life support system that's the government stimulus. We'll have to see how it goes. Here's the thing. I mean, it's a good analogy looking at a, you know, someone on, on life support or someone in a coma for extended period where they're keeping you alive until you wake up. There needs to be a period of, well, you need to rebuild, re-strengthen. Your muscles need to regrow. You've atrophied. So parts of our economy are atrophying right now by force. The state's forcing it. So you're getting people who are losing skills in their jobs because they're simply not working. You know, there'll be a time for that to build up again. Economists have warned Australia's economic decline still looms in October and the government's announcement of the biggest budget deficit since World War II is a stark reminder of how big the fallout really is. Australian workers face decades of debt and the nation has been hit with the $852 billion borrowing bomb from fighting the pandemic. It was reported on Thursday. Here's the thing. What were some of the strategies that was used by the government post-World War II? I know a lot of people got very, very cheap loans, which we're all getting now, to be honest. Uh, they got very cheap loans. They got government housing, massive housing programs. And what will what will happen now? Treasurer Frydenberg revealed the stunning cost of the pandemic in an economic update that shows Australia's budget deficit will hit 184 billion mark this financial year in the biggest blow since World War II. The government's estimated 5 billion December surplus has tanked to 85 billion deficit for the last financial year, figures the treasurer calls eye-watering. According to a graph posted by the Grattan Institute CEO, Danielle Wood, Australia risks hitting a fiscal cliff in October and calls for the government to announce more stimulus measures to boost the economy. According to the Grattan Institute, the initial downturn is smaller than previously expected, but the recovery is now forecast to be slower. I, I'm surprised. Why are we even talking about recovery at the moment? We haven't even got the situation under control. There's still unknowns. There's still unknowns. We'll, ha we'll have to keep watching consumer and business confidence, guys. Because if we bring up here consumer confidence, you know, it's going a bit all over the place, but there's still a negative sentiment. We look at business confidence and conditions. It's crept back up. We'll have to wait next month to see how it goes. Deloitte Access Economics Partner. Chris Richardson backed this up on Thursday, claiming the next few months will be the lowest point in the Australian economy. Okay, so they're saying we're going to trough now in the next couple of months. We're going to trough in the next couple of months. We'll have to see. They're hoping, they're hoping that the economy will, will recover to the point where when the bank support mechanisms are removed and the government stimulus and support mechanisms are removed, it can keep, uh, keep going on. 
that the muscles have regrown, that they've, we've gained the economic strength to keep going. And there's the question, do you think that will happen? How much of our economy is dependent on things like foreign tourism, on foreign students coming over, propping up whole sectors of the economy, on demand for natural resources, which, well, do you think the foreign tourists, do you think the foreign migration, do you think the students, do you think that's all going to flood back by the time we, well, these support mechanisms are removed? There's a question for you. If they are, then maybe, maybe. If not, well, I, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. Changes to the government's support package, including job seeker and job keeper, which have become lifelines for businesses and individuals during the pandemic, were due to end in October, which threatened to create the fiscal cliff. Despite the government's announcement on Tuesday to extend the job keeper program until March, at a cost of sixteen billion, there are conditions and smaller amounts of cash on offer. This means a cliff still looms in October, albeit with a slightly less deadly drop off. Wood wrote in a piece for the conversation. Fiscal support will be eighteen billion on month a month on average, ten point seven percent of monthly GDP. Just think about that, guys. Ten percent of the GDP is fiscal support from the state. And then it drops to three mil three billion a month on average, one point nine percent for six months beyond. This will leave a big hole in economic activity, unlikely to be entirely filled by the private sector recovery. Well, I also think consumer confidence is in the toilet. People are people are worried. But then again, some some of you are saying in the comments that uh, you know you're talking to people and they think it's all good, it's all normal. Is it just? I mean, I'm ringing up people and asking them for fee proposals for jobs. You know, we've got a little job. I'll ring them up and go, and you ask them how's it going. They're busy now, but the pipeline's looking a bit quiet. The pipeline's looking a bit quiet. See, maybe that's the thing when you're talking to someone on the phone, you get a little bit more of a realistic, realistic peg at things, or for someone you know from going out for drinks and networking. You know, business owner to business owner, it's a little bit different than the marketing spiel that they all put forward. Could that be it? You know, is everyone putting on a face of continued economic confidence and hoping it'll happen, and secretly stashing away on gold and and silver bars, you know, and, and getting you know, improving their hunting skills? I I have been playing too much Far Cry. <laughs> I, it, completely unrelated though, it's made me thought of it now. I've, I've asked Rachel to order our entire a deer venison so she can cook it up because uh, it'd be interesting to see. What it's what it's like because I, i'm a you know we've just run out of our bulk meat i've just asked her to put in another order another another half beast and another um and you know i'd want to get want to try some deer never have so there we go completely back to topic now so this will leave a very big hole in economic activity and un unlikely to be filled by the private sector except for deer venison purchases through though invest smart Evan Lucas told Peter Stefanovic on Sky News that without it, it would be an even bigger hole. Few economists agree. Oh, sorry, fellow economists agree, of course, they all agree. It's been terrible, but we've had to spend that money. There's been no alternative. Well, there has been. There has been an, an alternative, and that's to, well, look at other ways of mitigating this virus and um, not spending the money. That was an alternative. People didn't see it. They don't think it's even feasible. They're scared of it. People are scared of it because it's going to be much harder. It's going to be much harder. But do you want to take the medicine now or do you want to take it later? And I, I can't imagine. That. I mean, we're, we're such a, a society in the nation that's so afraid of any difficulty. I mean, we can't even, can't even handle a recession. We can't even handle having a recession. The government juices up the economy to avoid that. The Reserve Bank juices up the economy to avoid that. I mean, you'd kind of need you need the failing businesses to crumble to make way for younger and smarter people to come up, remove the burden. You need that creative destruction. But I mean, we're slow snowflake generation guys. If you've been watching some of the recent videos, you know, all trades mother complaining on, on the website, people complaining about having to put in ten resumes. I'm sure I'm sure we were that annoying when we were that young too. It's just it's just stupidity, I think. You just learn. We all do stupid and you learn out of it. I mean, come on, I, I'm the same. We've all been stupid. So just remember 
This is the budget doing exactly what you want it to do in a crisis, protecting the pockets of families and businesses and keeping jobs going, he said. If we weren't running these enormous deficits, we would have less money today in the pockets of families and businesses. It is unfortunately entirely necessary. Yeah, but the per I mean, it's no point having money if the purchasing power of it just gets eroded. Who's noticing costs going up? Who's noticing that? Treasurer Frydenberg confirmed Thursday between March and May, 870,000 jobs were lost and more than 1 million Australians saw their work hours reduced in many cases to zero. The pandemic is a once in a century shock that is placing immense pressure on the health system and economies all around the world, he said. Yes, but what if it's not? What if it's not a once in a century? What if this, what if this drags out for two years, three years? What if it drags out for five? Wood noted Australia's official unemployment rate is expected to rise from 7.4% today to a peak of 9.25% by Christmas. As most firms move off JobKeeper, many Australians who are without work start looking again. That's going to be the thing. You're going to see a hit. I mean, there was a perverse situation that was created by the government introducing JobKeeper. People who were not eligible for it were fired, while the people who were eligible for it were retained. That's what happens. The government was criticised for failing to introduce stimulus measures to jumpstart the economy before the cliff hits and said the changes in, measure, and changes in measures to JobKeeper weren't enough. The government has missed a golden opportunity to commit to new stimulus measures to support the recovery, something that most economists agree is needed. The Grattan Institute estimates it would take 70 to 90 billion annually over the next two years to force the unemployment rate to below 5%. The forecasts of a slow, slower economic recovery and the prospect of a wor worsening outbreak in Victoria make the stimulus even more urgent. The stimulus takes time to roll out, waiting for the October budget when we have already passed the cliff. Face means that more money won't hit the economy as fast as it needs to. But if, I mean, the government's running debt, so they're going to create more money through bonds by uh, intermediaries in the RBA to generate that, how much effect is that going to have on inflation over time? So we can see some of the figures here. You know, GDP, negative 3.75%. Business investment, negative 6%. There you go. Taxes, down. Well, tax receipts, down. It'd be great if taxes were down. You know, that, that's, that's a hope. Record low interest rates would ease debt levels over time, economists say. But the biggest concern is that the government has not yet done enough to get the economy back on track. Ahead of the announcement, Frydenberg said Australians should prepare themselves for a shock as the true impact of the pandemic is revealed, you will see eye-watering numbers around debt and deficits, numbers that Australia's never, Australians have never seen before. That's the harsh reality of this pandemic. The pandemic has required the government to spend unprecedented amount of money to support the public in need. And some people are actually better off right now than they were in the past. So here we have it. More concern for the fiscal cliff in October. No, not entirely. Some argue it hasn't been addressed and hasn't disappeared. What do you all think, everyone? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. Interacting with the channel is great. It helps the channel grow and lets other people know that you are enjoying the videos. You can support us financially via joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon, using any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin, buying our merch from Heiser Says, using Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or supporting us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you next time.